And let's look at another example of finding the volume of a solid uh, by this technique of cross-sectional slicing. Uh, let's find the volume of the solid, which we're going to call S, to describe in the following way. Uh, we're going to take the base of X, S to be a circle. Um, just a standard circle, its radius will be R. Uh, again, nothing too fancy right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to stack on top of this circle parallel cross sections, which are perpendicular to the base, and they themselves are squares. So we get a square that's stacked. Uh, whoops, try that again. We take a square that's stacked here. That's a square. Ooh, that's a hideous drawing. Let me try that one more time. We take a square that looks like something like that. That looks a little better. Um, we take another square, maybe right here. And we have just a whole bunch of squares that are going to be stacked on top of this solid here. You can see that I'm having a hard time drawing a picture. So what I'm going to do is actually go to a web-based app online uh, that you can actually take a look at this solid right here. The link uh, to this to this website you can find in the description of this video if you want to kind of play around with it yourself. And so what you see here is this solid where the bottom of the solid is a circle. It's a circle. Um, but we've stacked these squares on top of it. So look at the bottom left right here to kind of see the skeleton of this object right here. And so as you spin this around, you can see these, you can see the circle that's on the bottom. We're rotating around the center of that circle. And there's all these different uh, squares that are placed on the base of the circle. Now, the, the base circle is going to determine how big the square is. The closer you are to the middle of the square, uh, the, the closer you are to the middle of the square is going to tell you uh, how big the squares are going to be bigger. And then when you're to the far edges, you're going to get smaller and smaller squares. Um, this one right here can kind of show you, like, one by one, we have a bigger square, a bigger square, a bigger one, bigger, until you get in the middle. Then they're going to start shrinking as they get closer and closer to the edge. And so you get these corners that come up here. And so then this picture on the top, uh, you see uh, it's colored and shaded, so we get a little bit more of a three-dimensional three perspective to this thing. Um, it's kind of an interesting little, uh, little shape here. Um, what would be the volume of a shape like this? It turns out that using our technique of cross-sectional slicing, we can actually find uh, the volume of this thing fairly nicely. So let's first think about the unit circle. That's uh, We're going to put that in the xy plane. So we have this, uh, not a unit circle, but a circle of radius r. Um, its center is going to be at 0, 0, right? So this equation of the circle is given by x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Um, that's going to be important to us. Now, to find the volume using these cross-sectional slicing, we want to integrate our area function, a, a, a of x, dx. The dx is the thickness of these prisms, um, and the area is going to be, uh, is going to be the, a, the a of x is the area of the function. Now, because we have a square, I'm going to draw the square in front of you. The square, if we say that the side length is s, then our area function is just going to be s squared. Now, that's a good place to get started, but we have to do a little bit better than that because as we're integrating with respect to x, not s, we're going to have to somehow represent s as a function of x. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Um, what I want to next think about, what are the bounds of integration, right? What are these values over here? Well, let's look at the circle. Um, in terms of our x-coordinates, our x's are going to be anywhere from this side of the circle all the way to the other side of the circle. Now, this point on the right is r comma 0, and this point on the left is going to be negative r0. And so those are going to represent the bounds we're considering. x can range from negative r up to r. So now we have to represent um, this value s in terms of, in terms of the, the, the variable x. So thinking about our our squares here, a typical cross section would look something like this, where s is the length of this side right here. Well, what we do know about this, about this side length of the square is we do have this point right here, x comma y, where if we solve the equation of the circle in terms of y, we get y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. Um, the, the side length s is going to equal two times this y coordinate. And if we make this substitution in for y, we can then square s, and we get the following. We're going to get 4 times y squared, uh, which we, so we squared the 2, we squared the y. And as y squared 
uh, is the square of the square root of r squared minus x squared. That's what we get in there, r squared minus x squared. And we're going to make this substitution in for the area function right there. And so then the volume is going to look like the integral from negative r to r. We had 4 times r squared minus x squared dx. And so now we're going to use symmetry again here. Uh, because we're integrating from negative r to r, and this thing is symmetric, like if we come back to the picture here, right, this thing does have a nice symmetry along the x-axis, uh, which would be this value in the middle there. And so using symmetry, we can actually write this integral as 2 times the integral from 0 to r. Um, I'm actually going to so we have the 4 as well. I'm going to bring the 4 out. So we're going to get 2 times 4, which is actually an 8. Uh, and that leaves behind an r squared minus x squared on the inside, which we can integrate that fairly simply. Uh, now, be aware that x is our variable. r is a constant, just an unspecified constant. So as we integrate, the antiderivative of r squared is going to be r squared x. Be t make sure you don't say r cubed over 3. We're not taking the integral with respect to r, we're taking with respect to x. On the other hand, the antiderivative x squared will be an x cubed over 3. And we plug in 0 and r. Uh, and so when you plug that in, you're going to get an r cubed minus r cubed over 3, like here. Um, factor out the r cubed, you're going to get 8 r cubed, and then you get 1 minus a third. Uh, 1 minus a third, of course, is 2 thirds. And so we see that the area is going to be 16 thirds r cubed. Um, it seems somewhat fantastic to me that the answer does not have the number pi in it whatsoever because after all the shape was defined using uh, some type of circle on the base, right? So you would think that like, the area of the circle is pi r squared, but be aware that the base is just a constraint that the volume is actually a string of squares. Squares having area s squared have nothing to do with pi. And so the final volume of this solid doesn't involve pi at all. It involves just the number 16 thirds times the radius of the circle cubed.